Hello, my name is Jonathan Johnson and I'm a Solutions Architect at AWS. Today I'm going to walk you through a proof of concept I developed for a customer. The customer wanted to use AWS IoT secure tunneling to enable remote desktop at scale. Secure tunneling is a capability within AWS IoT Core. It allows secure access to your IoT devices without requiring inbound ports to be open. My customer manufactures large mining and agricultural equipment with edge hardware running AWS IoT device software. And they wanted support staff to be able to remote desktop into the IoT devices to see the same screen that the machine operators see. They wanted to do this securely and without installing additional software or opening network ports. If you are new to AWS IoT Secure Tunneling, I encourage you to review the documentation at the link shown. Also, it's a good idea to review the service limits. Here's the end-to-end -end architecture. Starting on the right, field equipment has hardware to run AWS IoT device software. Two other software components are required. First, the remote desktop service. For devices running Windows, this could be the built-in remote desktop service. My customer's Edge devices are running Linux, and they have pre-installed a VNC-compatible service. The next component is local proxy. This is an open source solution we provide on GitHub. Local proxy is required on each end of the tunnel. The source application, in this architecture, that is a remote desktop client, and the destination, which is the remote desktop service. Next, we need a management layer, shown here with yellow background, to coordinate the secure tunnel creation for each remote desktop session. Finally, the presentation layer is a single page web app hosted on S3 and delivered via Amazon CloudFront. Amazon AppStream is embedded in the web app to stream the remote desktop client application to the user's web browser. AppStream simplifies deployment and improves the security posture because the support staff do not need additional software, nor do they need network access to the secure tunnel. Let's walk through what happens when a support person needs to remote desktop into an Edge device. In the web app, the user will enter in an IoT device name, which is sent to a, a Lambda function via API gateway. The Lambda function invokes an AWS step function, which coordinates several tasks. The first task is to request a new secure tunnel. When the tunnel is created, it will return a source access token and a destination access token. These tokens are used to ensure the source application connects to the right destination. The step function stores the source token in parameter store, and it starts the local proxy task in Elastic Container Service. The ECS task retrieves the token from parameter store when it starts. Next, the step function publishes the destination access token to the device's reserved topic. The IoT device will start local proxy in destination mode using the provided token. Note, if either token has expired or is invalid, local proxy will not be able to connect to the secure tunnel service. With the tunnel created and local proxy running on both sides of the tunnel, the remote desktop client can connect, is able to connect to the device shown here with animated arrows. The desktop client connects to the ECS, ECS task's private IP address, and the connection is forwarded to the field device. The support staff is able to view and interact with the remote desktop client streamed to the user's browser. Okay, let's review the main components in a little more detail. As mentioned, the Edge device will need to be connected to AWS IT Core, and it needs to subscribe to the reverse reserved topic shown here. Also, the device needs to be configured to run the remote desktop service, and it needs the local proxy. We provide local proxy containers on AWS's public ECR registry. In my customer's use case, we didn't want to run containers on the IoT device, so I created a co-pipeline to build executables, including the dependencies. This screenshot shows three different builds for different hardware and operating uh, system configurations. You'll need a way to deploy the executable to the field device. One option is using MQTT-based file delivery. Here's a little more detail on this step function I described earlier. It creates the IoT tunnel, 
distributes the source and destination tokens, and when everything is ready, it stores the connection information in a DynamoDB table, and it sends those connection details back to the web app. Here's a screenshot of the web app, which I'll demo in a minute. The user types in an IoT device name, and when the button is clicked, the step function builds up the tonal components. When that is available, the web app will display the remote client app in the browser. Before I demo the solution, I want to describe how I built it. I used Amazon QCLI to build out most of the components shown in the architecture diagram. I instructed Q to use Amazon Cloud Development Kit, or CDK, to create the AWS resources. It did most of the heavy lifting, including things like configuring VNC service on Ubuntu, creating the web app, and creating the step function and Lambda functions. Q saved a ton of time. You can get started with the Amazon Q developer in CLI by visiting the link shown. Okay, let's see the demo. Okay, I've logged into the AWS IoT console and I'm viewing the details of my test device. As you can see, the device is connected to IoT Core. I'll copy the device name and paste it into the web app. Now I can click the Start Remote Session button. This will kick off the step function to create the secure tunnel. While that's what executing, we'll pop over to the step function and we can view the details and monitor its progress. We can also look at the ECS task. This is running local proxy in source mode, and this is what the remote desktop client will connect to. Back on the web page, we see that we have the IoT device IP address and port. Again, that's the local proxy source IP address. Now I'm ready to hit launch AppStream session. This will take a minute or so to fire up. Okay, now I can pay, copy in the IP address and port number to connect to my Edge device. And enter in the password. Now I'm viewing the Edge device's desktop. I can control the device and see exactly what the machine operator sees. This will enable the support staff to troubleshoot the issue. That concludes this presentation and demo. I hope you found value in this. Drop a comment if you have any questions about the solution or would like a follow-up video. Thanks for watching.